All right, we're back. We've got the Atlanta Falcons here with KJ. You can find him on the Twitter at the FFB Tech. How you doing, man? Hey, not too bad. How you doing, boss? Good, good. Glad to glad to have you here. Ready to uh, get into the Falcons. It's a it's a fun team here. A lot of <laughs> lot lot to digest. A lot of uh, high end prospects that we're really hopeful in fantasy so let's figure out if if we're kind of in or out or you know should we must avoid or or must draft kind of deal here so um where do you want to start off with on the falcons kj you know we can't talk about where we're going until we talk about where they've been and man right. last season was a little rough some ups some downs mostly downs but uh i think we could dive right in what do you think sure Sure. I think I think uh, our guy Foreman here is only up was was Algier and then he got gutted with the draft. So uh, he's he's down. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, fifth round picks, it'd be like that sometimes. huh? Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, Atlanta Falcons, seven and ten record. I think that that doesn't really tell the whole story, because if you look at their passing game, you would think that they were basically one in 16, but Marcus Mariota supplying the passing attack for a team is apparently not exactly the recipe for success anymore, which is why they got rid of him like a bad habit. He quit. Um, all right. He didn't get rid. He didn't get fired. He quit. <laughs> yeah, no, I, <laughs> You can't fire me. I quit. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, we're looking at the team as a whole and they were 31st in passing rate and for good reason, because the only thing that seemed to work for them for a while was Tyler Algier, which came out of left field, wasn't really expecting a thousand yard rusher out of the fifth round rookie, but Hey man, at least something worked. Uh, yeah. As a team, I mean, we're looking at 415 pass attempts and only 2,699 passing yards. That is just dumpster fire, mm -hmm. but that's kind of what you get when you're kind of in this transition phase, which they definitely needed to move to Ritter sooner rather than later, in my opinion but at least they got to it. But if we just look the year before, I mean, they were eighth in passing rate. They were 60.1% uh, passing rate. If we just move them to middle of the pack, that would have easily added roughly 120 to 150 pass attempts. And I mean, it's not crazy to think with the talent between Pitts and London that that could have added 800 to 1,000 yards. I mean, easily, I think, in my opinion. So it's pretty wild that, that they were just so low. But then again, we'll kind of get into that in a minute that London and Pitts never really even saw the field together. So it's right. kind of tough. I agree. Once you saw the switch over to to Ritter there, um, I think you did see a little a little jump in the last three games from 24.4 attempts per game to 29.7. That gives you some hope for for those guys. Uh, you know, uh, they Ritter, need was, it. <laughs> Ritter, was, Ritter was 13th in attempts in weeks 15 through 18. So, you know, if we can, like you said, in the middle of the pack there, we get some hope, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, and it's looking good moving forward. We, we did see that pass, uh, those pass attempts did rise. Uh, we we do have an above average athlete with Ritter. I mean, he was uh, in his 40 time, I believe he was 98th percentile, I maybe just a hair lower than that. And then he had an elite burst score with 94, uh, 4th percentile as well. So, I mean, there's something there. He just has to be average with the supporting talent to take this team even further than it did last year, which it really isn't saying much. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think Ritter's uh, Ritter's over under for the year is 26.2600.5 for yardage. Um, that is wild to me, buddy. That's a, that's a hammer. The over that's a hammer. The over. So the, the over they're giving you plus 100, the under um, I believe is, is minus minus one twenty. So yeah, you could get, get some decent, decent uh, cash on that. I mean, what a nice beatable uh, division that they're, that he's living into. And then third right. best strength of schedule this year. I mean, yeah, can't beat that. No, no. And, and, you know, those things can adjust in year because we're not 100 percent sure. But looking in outside, looking in uh, that, that looks good. And, you know, you mentioned that they didn't make, they should have made the switch faster. They were kind of in contention there for, you know, a little while as, as bad as it was. Um, with, with the Falcons and, you know, the division just not being you know, super great. Uh, so, you know, that's another reason why, you know, hope for Atlanta. The division is kind of, you know, a bit of a toss up here, right? Uh, yeah, I will tell you that they were not in contention due to Marcus Mariota. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> no, no, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying that he was, but I mean, you're not going to rock the boat. Arthur Smith already was kind of familiar with him. And, you know, 
Mariota really, I mean, wasn't awesome from a fantasy perspective, but every week he'd, he'd get it sort of done enough if you were if you really needed him in an emerging situation for a QB two and super flex. It wasn't the worst ever, uh, but no, they 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 certainly could have stood to make a change sooner to see what you had in Ritter. But you know, some people said the the once they made the change that Ritter was trash. The PFF score isn't great. Some other people have some really positive st- things to say about what they saw from Ritter in those uh, last four games. I, I think I lie somewhere in the middle. Uh, but you're right though. I think I think underrated athleticism there can can give you some some sneaky uh, backdoor. You know, 30, 40 rushing yards a game, which we like to see uh, with our quarterback to, to, you know, just boost that floor up, make them a little safe each week. Yeah, absolutely. And, and like I said, uh, you know, he's an above average, average athlete. I think that he has some scrambling ability that we just really didn't get to showcase. Uh, but that week 14 by just didn't come soon enough where he can <laughs> kind of be integrated into the play calling into the scheme. And I mean, we're talking about a team that at the end of the day is still going to be predicated on their rushing attack. I mean, and everything that they've shown up to this point, taking a top 10 running back, taking a dynamic rushing guard. I mean, we're going to see more rushing for sure. But I think that we're still going to be balanced. I don't see 31st in pass attempts in their future again this year. Yeah, I think both of those numbers can come, you know, a little closer to each other. I think, like you said, we'll probably still be uh, maybe maybe. 20s in passing attempt and maybe we fall down to you know into the into the 10s 12s and in rush attempts but we can be even more i mean they were efficient last year but we can be even more efficient i think with this rushing and Bijan is is a you know you said algier you know in the past game was wasn't bad right i mean you yeah. know that Bijan is plus plus in the past game and that they haven't stopped talking about him uh so you know. Yeah, dynamic weapon, not even a running back anymore. That's the favorite buzzword nowadays. It's not even a running back. Right, right. Which, you know, good for them. Maybe maybe they could get paid as and just get a new position. We'll call it something different. And <laughs> Got to do something, buddy. <laughs> All right, All right. Um, so with Desmond Ritter, he's coming in at, at 10.7 in our FFD ADP. That's super flex tight end premium and QB 36. How do you feel about that? Yeah. Um, it's wild to me, buddy. It really is. I, I think that too low uh, or too high, too low. Uh, too low? I, I do think he's too low. Uh, I think that just the fact that we haven't seen London and Pitts together, the fact they're adding Bijan as a safety valve, the fact that he does have rushing ability, we haven't got to showcase yet. Um, I think that his floor is going to be extremely safe as long as you know health permitting, with just the two running backs plus the offensive pa- or receiving weapons. I, I think that that's. I mean, way lower than his floor really is, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I think I think people are just worried about the replaceability there. Um, I think that's what's Taylor holding, Heineke. What's holding yeah. that down? Well, I mean, not even Heineke. Just next year, there's already maybe a little buzz about the Niners uh, talking to them about Trey Lance. Uh, there's some talks about offering a second rounder, uh, future second rounder for Lance. You know, is you know, that something I, that worries you or? It, it something sticks in the back of my mind. Uh, you know, the fact that they, I, I feel like if Lance was going to be on their radar to trade for, I feel like his price tag is just rising now. The more that they give buzz out of camp, the more they're talking about he could be the starter week one. I think that they're trying to drive up the price. And if they wanted to get in, I, I think they would have done it around the time they took on Heineke, in my opinion when they were already saying that Brock Purdy was ahead of schedule. I mean, we've yeah. been hearing all these things from the 49ers. I think it's a lot of, uh, a lot of pretty much uh, just fluffing up their quarterback. Somebody's getting traded and it ain't going to be Sam Darnold. So I mean, <laughs> I, I think it's going to be Purdy or, or Lance on the move. And honestly, I could go either way, but I don't think Atlanta is actually in on a quarterback. I know that sounds strange, but I really do feel like they have confidence in Ritter just based on their draft um, they, they did have the opportunity to try to move around and I, I didn't really see him doing anything besides trying to bolster what they already had around him. Right. And that, you know, that was, they, they've m- multiple times come and in, in to the reassurance of Ritter. So I think that's a, that's a pretty good point. I mean, I'm not going to begrudge anybody to try to upgrade your quarterback position, but 
um, it, it does seem like they do have a fair amount of confidence uh, with Ritter and, you know, what's around them. You're, you're giving them the keys to to success here. I mean, there's not there's not too many better situations to walk into um, as, a, as a rookie quarterback than kind of what is set up in Atlanta. You have an offensive line, uh, which is, you know, was. Is, is coming in at the year at seventh in PFF's rankings. Now that's down from two. So they, they finished the season at around five uh, last year with the PFF grade. So, you know, and then I like the, like we've been mentioning and we'll, we'll, we'll get to them all, but you know, you do have Bijan, you still have Algier, uh, you still have Cordero Patterson who, you know, is older, but I mean, ha, ha, has, I think can still be a nice, you know, intricate part of, of what you're doing uh, for Slot wide receiver. Right. Uh, he can do Patterson a bunch of this year. Right. Give you a bunch of different things. And, and you have uh, Drake and you have Pitts. So, I mean, this is this is a, a pretty exciting offense. Um, but I think people are a little concerned that uh, it's not going to get off the ground uh, and be kind of have a, you know, a little bit of a downed airplane situation here. But it seems like both of us might have a little bit of positivity here. So um, Desmond Ritter or Will Levis. Oh, Ritter. Levis or uh, Ritter or Stafford Stafford, but man, I am waning. I'd be lying if I said I was confident in that with kind of them posturing, like this could be the honeymoon being over. I know it's just media right now, but the fact that it came out that they were possibly trying to trade him this last off season, I do think that the Rams are at any moment going to tear this down and just redo everything. And that terrifies me. Yeah, I think they have something like 40 rookies on that roster right now. So I think we're just wow. about there. So uh, but I think Stafford is too low. I think the offense will still function just just fine. Um, so I think Stafford is too low. So I don't think those two should be necessarily comparable. I have, Stafford's been a favorite of mine. I think you should have a little bit of a uh, round difference there. Uh, let's look at some other guys real quick. Dalvin Cook or Desmond Ritter. Ooh, man, without knowing where he's going to land. Um in super flex leagues, I tend to lean the quarterback side, but I mean, it's neck and neck. I guess I'd take Ritter, but I'd probably regret it in a week. <laughs> um, all right, we'll do a couple more and then we'll get to uh, the next. We'll get to Bijan. Um, I know you're, you see, I think you're a Kendra guy. So Kendra Miller or uh, Ritter. Oh, man, you had to do that. Oh. Ken, Kendra coming in at 9-5 right now. The last mock we did, he dropped down a little bit. From some yeah. news that I don't think was necessarily really meant all that much, uh, but Ritter or, or Miller? Oh man, roster construction base, uh, and and again, that's what a lot of this will come down to. So it's kind of apples and oranges a little bit, but we're just having a little fun here. Uh, yeah, I mean my my Kendra Miller love is just irrational at this point. Too I strong, yeah, it's it's too, too strong. strong, man. I'm the chairman of the the Kendra Miller fan club. <laughs> what if you could swap Ma uh, Ritter for Madison or trade Madison for Ritter? Would you? I would trade away Madison. I, I do feel like people are propping up Madison too high. I have I have actively been putting that out there on Twitter. That I, I mean, I'm trying to turn my Madison shares into Kendra Miller shares. And now with the news coming out, I think it's all too achievable. So yeah, absolutely. I would I would ship Madison away. You'd like as a, a Madison as a good target to swap for Ritter if possible. I don't know if if you get that done or not, but you, you like that? Yeah, I, I do. If I need a QB, I would definitely do it. Let's do two more quarterbacks: Jimmy G or Ritter. Ooh, um, man, I think I would take Jimmy. Uh, I think I without the question marks consumer. right now with Jimmy, I think you got to take Jimmy. But so the, the question marks are clouding you up a little bit because he just he's not even yeah. healthy necessarily. And um, they put in that void clause where if this foot thing doesn't work out, they could actually cut him. Is, right. I think that's still the status we're looking at. Right. I think he plays, but it definitely makes it too. a little closer than I would want. And how about Sam Howell or Ritter? They're the ones I have neck and neck. I have Ritter a spot higher right now. Yeah, I, I think... I think the way the offense could get called, how maybe might be a slightly more appealing, um, but yep. also I think has less floor. Um, but I think how has some sneaky upside rushing too. I think right. I he, mean, yeah, he's underrated as a rusher, absolutely, and I think that's where he's going to get a lot of his fantasy points. The only unknown for me, as far as Howell goes, is how much of what we've seen from Beanie is actually just Andy Reid, and how much is Beanie, and does it yeah. just completely? 
change as soon as he goes to a different team. Right. And what's that O line look like? You got Ritter with just a, you know, a, a Jared golf like situation where, Hey, I got a good O line. This makes things a whole lot easier. I have, I have a, a fair amount of faith in Arthur Smith as a coordinator. Um, yeah. So I think they were doing what they, you know, I know everybody in the fantasy space was upset because it wasn't going right for your Kyle Pitts shares and your Drake shares, but they were in a lot of games. Uh, and you know, as, as ugly as it was, he was doing what he had to do to survive. Um, so, oh, yeah. you know, um, I think that's a good part of it. And again, just to hammer it home, I think you did see a little bit of that change and some hope again, going in, you know, he was, uh, 13th in attempts. Ritter was once he got in weeks 15 through 18. And again, rising up from 24.4 attempts per game to 29 in the last three games of the season is, you know, 29.7. So almost 30. I think if we can get up in that 30, 32 range, all of a sudden we're a middle of the pack passing team, you know, I mean, just think Pittsburgh Steelers. I mean, they were kind of middle of the pack in both. And I think that, uh, you know, Najee isn't Bijan. Um, so that's going to be the wild card, but are we sure? I, <laughs> Don't get me started, man. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna very be anti Najee. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'll be John over Najee. Uh, all oh, day I mean, hundred percent. But there's there is there Najee slander in your heart? If you have hate in your heart, you know, you know okay. man. I go back and forth on that. I think it, a lot of it. <laughs> I think he's going to be great on the ground. I just don't know. Yeah. Uh, and if we follow what Tomlinson's done with RBs, I don't know what everybody keeps talking about. Jalen Warren taken away from Najee. I don't get it. That's never been Tomlinson's style. So right. And I, 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 fuck, I, Najee was hurt for most of the season and still didn't take it away from him. Like I mean, what, I don't. And at the end of the season, Najee was good, and and Harris or uh, Warren touched the touched the ball a good bit in some of those games. But in those games where Warren touched it a good bit, Najee also touched it a shit ton more. Um, so. <sighs> Yeah. It's the whole like everybody thinks it's the new like Devontae Freeman and uh and Tevin Coleman situation. And I was Where like, it's Tony so Pollard and that. Zeke, and it's like, yeah, you know how long you guys pounded the <laughs> yeah. table for Pollard? He's 26 now. He finally might be getting a chance. And he had to rip it from Zeke. So and I don't see the the Steelers organization being all that different from the Cowboys organization of hey, we're gonna use this one guy. And it's you know, so kind of like you were saying there. Anyway, a little bonus uh Najee talk there for your <laughs> yeah, pleasure. Yeah. Gotta uh, get right. it in there. Let's uh let's go over to the Bijan Robinson side of this thing. What do you what do you got on the Bijan front? So Bijan, I mean, really we don't have to wax too much poetic on on one sure. of the top prospects that we've seen right. in a long time. A lot of people say that he's the best prospect to see since Saquon. I don't put him at Saquon's level. Uh, personally, I, I view him more of Ezekiel Elliott, which people are quick to forget just how good is he was mm -hmm. for such a long time yeah. uh, and, and I think he's exactly what Zeke was. I think he's going to get out of the gate fast. I think that he's exactly what this offense needed who just got, like I said, over a thousand yards out of a fifth round rookie. You know, no, no, uh, you know, slander to, to Algier, but he's not Bijan and the people who think that it's going to be split so messy that Bijan's not going to be good year one. What are we even talking about? Yeah. Come yeah, on. I I agree. They got Bijan penciled in for eleven hundred and a half yards as the over under for the total. I would take the over. I think he got to if if Algier Absolutely. was. I mean, I think Algier, you know, at the end of the season was getting a little more love because they were hurt with a decent amount of backs. But I just, I don't know. May, maybe some. Maybe you get a little added. Uh, you know, pass catching efficiency from Bijan that might take away from a little bit of the rushing. Um, and I do think Algier will still be in there, but it would if if Algier went over a thousand, you would stand a reason that you could get uh and it's plus plus a hundred uh for the for the over on on that one. Um so Easy minus one twenty for the under. Yeah. All right, what else you got on Bijan? So as far as Bijan goes, the the thing that really excites me about him fitting into the, I mean, he could not fall into a better landing spot. I think we all knew that. Yeah. Uh, this is what everybody kind of had him earmarked for. The only other thing that we were curious about is does he land on the Chargers, which would have terrified and excited me. Those are the two best spots. Yeah, um, thank God it wasn't the Patriots. <laughs> oh, yeah, taking on Lenny Fournette. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're, we ain't got time to go into that. Yeah. Um, but as far as Bijan, I mean, we're talking about a team that ran the most outside zone rushing since a team in 2015. And honestly, I can't even think off the top of my head what that team was. But that's just how much outside zone ran uh, was run last year for them. And they have, like I said, the top offensive line, at least 
So it says they moved down two spots. I think that's just because they have a rookie left guard, but I think that he's going to slot in perfectly for what they want to do for run blocking. I think that a zone system for Bijan is going to put him... I mean, there's a reason why we're talking about him in first round in startups. I'm not that hot uh, to take most running backs in a first round period. Uh, and I, in redraft, if we're going there, I wouldn't even put him ahead of Saquon just yet. Uh, I know that might be spicy for some people. Mm. But th- I mean, this is the dream situation for a running back. He's going to get the touches. He's going to average, you know, easily over four and a half a carry. I mean, that's that's just his absolute floor if if everybody is keying in on him every single play. Right. Um the sky's the limit for Bijan. I mean he he is a top three back right now. Yeah. I mean he's he's the number one RB in the FFD ADP super flex tight end premium. He's going at around 111. So it's usually either at the turn or right after the turn. Um, and I have I am not opposed uh, to that. I'm with you. I'm not going to go super high on really any running back necessarily. But if you're going to give me Bijan, JT or Brees in the top two to three rounds, I'll take those. Other than that, I'll wait. Um, but they're just such a, a strong asset um, for your team. I know no, running backs aren't the sexiest thing right now. And and but the 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 the. I mean, Brees got hurt last year, and if he wouldn't have got hurt, he'd probably be the RB1 right now. And, and he's still holding, you know, mid-second value um, in a lot of those. And so I, I just – I feel like those couple of running backs stand alone. The rest do what you will with, but I, I feel safe in those assets. So uh, not scared of that. Over-under is 8.5 for the TDs for Bijan. That's just on the ground. I – I have him slotted for 10. So, I, and I mean, I thought that was even a little conservative because I Woo. believe he gets everything on the ground. Yeah. Ritter could take some of those potentially. Yeah. Um, I, I wonder how many designed run plays they'll have for Ritter. That will be very interesting to see in the first three weeks. Like I said, he's 98th percentile 40, 94th percentile burst. I think he has enough to get it done especially if they just lean on RPOs. Like I, I think there's a, a couple of offenses this year that are going to lean way more on RPOs uh, and Atlanta is one of them. So, yeah, I think that would be good. I think that would be great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah. Any, any further thoughts on Bijan? Like you said, there's not, not too much to go crazy with here. I feel like, you know, Bijan has been talked about so much that it almost like falls on deaf ears now. Cause like, yeah, we know he's right. great. I get it. He's right. like the best thing since LaDainian Tomlinson. Can we move on? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I agree. Like you said, it's a, it was just a great situation, um, and, oh, and we're stoked, and and the, the talent is is uh, through the roof. So uh, let's let's move on to the receiving portion of this, and there isn't a, a ton to talk about, but the the big two that they have, you know, to make up their kind of big three, which I'm not sure there's you know a more fun big three in the league. Um, we're waiting for the other two to really break out necessarily, although Pitts pretty much broke the rookie record is for um, receiving yards in uh, yeah in his rookie campaign there. So for people to come out and say, well, we've been so disappointed. Like, what do you mean? Like he was hurt and you know, the, the Atlanta Falcons were sputtering a little bit with Mariota at the helm, but Jesus Christ, the first season he came out there, he was also, now I get it. There's an extra game in there, but like he was fantastic for a rookie. Barely he didn't score any touchdowns. Okay. So 50 <laughs> yards shy of a record that's been set since 1961 by Mike right. Ditka. Ditka. Like Ditka. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a craziness, man. Like, yeah, uh, I, I mean, and that's what people keep forgetting, too, is everybody's talked about how Arthur Smith just like ruins good talent. And like, you do know that he's the one who drafted him and gave him those yards. Right. Like, right. That's that's how that worked out. And now all of a sudden he's like, yeah, but Arthur Smith is still there. And like, yeah. So the guy who almost broke the rookie tight end. Record. Yeah, I'm Perfect. excited about that. Like that doesn't, that's not really a deterrent for me. Like this was about as bad as the year could go for Pitts. Right. And I think, I think expectations are the the bugaboo, the bane of Pitts existence. He came off that big year and everybody's a unicorn. And, and I, I'm, I'm still not afraid to draft Kyle Pitts wherever I really need to in, in tight end premium. Mm-hmm. I think just a little bit of a bummer of a situation and look, they were, they were doing what they had to do getting by with Mariota last year, coming off of a franchise quarterback that they had had for ever uh, in, in Matty ice. And you know, that's, you know, not, there's not a whole lot of green Bay Packers uh, out there that go right from 
Uh, you know, and we'll see what happens this year with the, you know, like you don't go from Favre to Rogers very often. I'm not obviously Matty Ice is not Favre to Ro- or Rogers, but a damn good quarterback uh, in his own right through his uh, tenure there. So, uh, you know, you're adjusting there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we don't know what Ritter is yet. You know what I mean? We right. can't look at a, a four game sample and be like, this is him. This is what we get. You know, unless you want to look at week 18 where he was the QB 11 and be like, this is it. This is what we get. You know, you can't have I mean, it one way and not the other. Cherry pick wherever you want. Yeah, sure. That's what sure. Everybody does anyway. Yeah. Why not? Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, touching on Kyle Pitts, it, we never saw him with Ritter. So that is something to, I wouldn't say worry about because the talent always bears out, you know, right. uh, is, is that, we didn't get to see what that would look like. But what we did get to see is just how dynamic he still was with some of the things that we got to see in the offense. You know, granted, it's Ritter slotted in instead of Mariota, which I find is a net positive. But I mean, he still had a 13.1 uh, average depth of target, which was second at the position, you know, a 34.3 target per route run. So that's his target percentage on a route. Uh, which was first at the position and 2.07 uh, yards per route run, which was fifth at the position. Now, the craziest part is that he had 541 unrealized air yards. That's first at tight ends. And if we would have just given him 350 to 400, why not? We'll just leave the under, other 141 yards out of there. He would have landed inside the top five to seven with upside for more based on TDs. So you can't look at just the season and be like, well, this is just who he is now. I was like, yeah, but look at all the stuff that could have done had, you know, his target accuracy not be 38th and his average QBR be 31st in the league. You know, right. it, it, it gets better. <laughs> this isn't what he is. Yeah. No, I, I, I love that. Uh, and, you know, and everybody's mad. So I, I think, you know, they can be um, mad. That just means value on draft day. Uh, agreed. Um, so again, for the, for the FFD ADP, uh, we have them at three, three and a super flex tight end premium tight end two. still Mark Andrews is the tight end one going one spot ahead of him. So three, two, and then Kelsey's at, at three, five. So thoughts on Kyle Pitts around that area. Uh, I, <laughs> People are not going to like it. I, I mean, I still have, I have Kelsey uh, still number one, even Dynasty. Do whatever uh, and, you want to do with Kelsey, man. I'm not going to uh, yeah. you to go any way you want to go. You want to say he's old and I'm fading him, or you're going to say I'm taking him every time because I want to win. Do you? But and, like, but people aren't as upset about that as when you tell them that Andrews is three. You know, and and that's super upsetting for people. They're like, he should be two at the very lowest. I'm like, we're off by one spot. Yeah, we're, we're splitting, we're splitting hairs here, man. Like, <laughs> what are we doing? And, and I mean, would we be that surprised if, you know, we haven't, we talk about, we don't know what we're getting with Ritter. We don't know what we're, we don't know what we're getting with a new offense from Baltimore. Like, you know, exactly. it could be a whole, you know, all of a sudden they have options. You know, we don't, we're not going to, it's not Greg Roman where everything's might get run through Andrews. Not that I don't, I don't think the love affair and connections between Andrews and Lamar is going anywhere, but it might not be quite, as plentiful, like all of a sudden you have some decent options. Like your th- starting three is the wide receivers is the best you've ever had there. I mean, you have two first round wide receivers, right? Plus Odell. I mean, who's Plus Odell, who obviously was old, <laughs> right? You know, and Bateman and and Flowers and then Duvernay, who at times last year was being called on to be like a big time guy. But like, if he's your third or fourth, I'm not upset about that. Like he's he's a he's a decent player. Um, you know, so nah, do get James Prochet on the field more. There we go. Sure. I mean, SMU whatever. Love. I mean, it's decent, decent, uh, decent depth all of a sudden and, and a more spread out offense. So we don't exactly know what we're going to get. But, you know, Pitts is is my I, I would I'd put him at at two. I'm fine with that. If you want to again, if you want to take Andrews over him, I mean, what you're getting is a 29 year old as opposed to a 21 year old. I mean, they're 22. Um so I'm not upset if you're going to reset the clock eight years um, uh, for what could be easily setting more uh, records for tight ends very soon. Uh, you know, you just spouted all those uh, metrics, analytics, yards per route run, all that stuff. And all that stuff fared very well in his favor. So um, I think I think the uh, it's just it's just up from here. I know people are. People are so mad at Kyle Pitts and so out. And I'm, um, it just doesn't make any sense. Like the crazy, like people lose confidence so fast and amnesia just seems to be so prevalent in, in dynasty. Oh, recency bias, uh, recency bias. You know what I mean? Right. Would you rather have Kyle Pitts or Tua Superflex? Ooh, uh, man, 
that's actually like a line for me. Let me take a look here. Uh, I'll take Tua. And he's just ahead. Yeah, they're one spot off here. So three, three, mm-hmm. and three, four. Um, how about the 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 rookie quarterbacks, Bryce Young or CJ Stroud? I'll take Pitts. I think I would. I think I would as well. Um, how about Tyreek? I'll take Tyreek. That that one is also extremely close for me, but I do have Tyreek. I mean, he guaranteed us three years. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, uh, that's a that's a coin flip. I might be going. I might roll Pitts there, but you can't. Tyreek's. You know, that's a formula for winning. Uh, uh, yeah. So, um, how about is 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 Saint Brown? Is that going too high for you? Oof. Or are you uh, are you worried about St. Brown? Or I'm St. not. Brown? No, not at all. Uh, I think I'd take St. Brown. Um, yeah, agreed. That one is a couple of spots ahead. I do do get St. a little worried about St. Brown at times, but mostly no. I, I'm we still got, trading for him. We got St. Brown at 211, so he's he's a good bit, half a round or so ahead of where Pitts is going. So you're you're right on. You're tracking right with the ADP there. So um, you know, you. that's that's right on. Right on time. And then one more. Uh, let's go JSN or Pitts. Pitts. Um, I'm not as high as uh, on JSN as some people, but uh, I get it. Gotcha. How about Danny Dimes? I don't know where you stand on him. Pitts. Okay. I don't know. Some people are real high. I think I, <laughs> I, I, I like think, Jones. I still love I him. I think a round apart is fine for Jones and Pitts. Um, yeah. So, all right, uh, let's move over to Dre, unless you got anything else on pits. No, no, I think I think we hit pretty much the nail on the head. Just uh, if people would just remember that the talent didn't go anywhere, just the production based on how everything fell for the for this year. Yeah. Just, but did you see the video of him today? I mean, come on. It was was that what? <laughs> really? Uh, we're going we're to take we're going to take one drill and shorts and, and act like that's the end all be all today. He wasn't even trying to go as fast as he like. Uh, no, but the Twitter machine like is, that's game is speed. really is really something. Uh, he's also a tight Wild. end. So uh, take yeah. that for <laughs> what it is. All right, let's move over to his his counterpart. I guess he's not a tight end, but uh, Drake London um, coming in at, at wide receiver 13 for four round four pick one in our ADP. Uh, what are your thoughts on Drake? I like Drake. Um, I, I think he's going to be a very good number one wide receiver. There are definitely some stats that came out after this season that showcase that he can be even better than what we've seen. And I mean, we're talking about a passing attack that just ran out of gas and by, you know, after week two, uh, they, they just have <laughs> nothing uh, yeah. in the tank for through the air. So, uh, I mean, he ended with 117 targets, 72 receptions, 866 receiving yards and four touchdowns. I think that we see a boost in pretty much all of that. Um, the craziest part is even with Pitts missing, you know, 500 some odd uh, unrealized air yards, London had 640 unrealized air yards. This could have been a stellar season for London. I think that he's closer to Olave than some people let on. Um, I, I still do have Olave ahead, but I mean, there's there's just certain things that we can look at and pinpoint and show, okay, the talent does match to what we're looking for. So 2.4 yards per route run, that's 11th in the, uh, in, at the position, 32.4 targets per route run every time, you know, 32% of the time he was getting targeted, that's second at the position. And then shout out to Matt Harmon, reception perception. We've got 72.3 success rate versus man, 81.6% success rate versus zone, and 72.5 success rate versus press. I mean, oh, but he can't separate. Yeah, (laughs) looking at at some of these stats here, and he didn't have any cushion. (laughs) Oh, my God. So, I mean, this is a strong rookie season. That's, I mean, you don't see... You don't see those kind of numbers on accident. Like they don't, they don't just go out and run curls and get this. So, I mean, yeah, absolutely. The, we, we're going to see a boost for him. I think that this is easily going to be a, a thousand yard season. It's just how much over with how much rushing they're going to do. And I don't see two receiving options getting into that like 12 to 13 hundred, you know, receiving yards this season, but I definitely can comfortably see two get into that thousand. Uh, and still have some upside for TDs. I mean, he only scored, scored four. That's crazy. I, I mean, we should have seen probably seven to eight. Yeah, he's he's got the size and and the separation ability to to score more. He had four and a half uh, TDs as the over under for for Drake. Uh, Take the DraftKings. Pitts was also at four and a half. So they have both. Um, uh, 
Man, I'm becoming a Falcons fan on this. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. They got Ritter at 15 and a half <laughs> touchdown passes. Okay, so that it, I mean, the math has got to work out, right? So, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, like I said, 2,600 yards and a half for Ritter. So, I think that's a, I think that's an easy over because I think these. I think, like you said, those realistically, I think those two could give you a thousand themselves a piece. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that they're going to make up the lion's share of the passing attack. I mean, when you see what additions they've made, I mean, their like big acquisition at wide receiver was Scotty Miller. You know, no, no, uh, no slander to him either. I like Scotty, but yeah, um, we listen. We're obligated to like Scotty. He's doing <laughs> yeah, it for us. Right. All right, you know, <laughs> uh, it's Miller time, baby. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, he's gonna he's gonna take some. He's uh, he's not gonna be breaking you know, any records. Out. No, but no. Uh, yeah, so it's going to go through those two mainly. And then Bijan's going to get his fair amount of or receiving, but we're not, at, you know, thinking he's going to get some David Johnson thousand thousand his first out, but right. Um, yeah. I, I think that Drake London and Pitts are basically divvying up 80% of the pie. Yeah. I would, I would, I would say somewhere along those lines, the over under for Pitts yardage is 700 and a half and the over under for Drake's is eight twenty five and a half. and a half. Mm, Pitts, that's a good line for receiving. I, I, I'd, I'd say that seven fifty is where I'd probably put him. I haven't uh, statted out the receiving yards just yet for the season. I think, I think Pitts's TD number goes way up this year. Oh yeah, me too. And and just uh, man, going back and watching those games, which I know a lot of people don't like to do, but um, <laughs> it's painful. He was scheming him up, and he was open. He, there was there was plenty of times, and you said unrealized. <laughs> Like there were so many times where they had him schemed perfectly and it just, they didn't connect or he didn't look his way or it didn't connect with him. So like you said, it's, it's there, man. I just, okay, I'm going to keep buying pits. Yeah, absolutely. Did you see that mashup of all the targets from Mariota that he missed pits on? I did not, but oh I goodness, that was proved that my up. point right there. Maybe we can it's throw that up at the, at the, on this video here. Uh, I don't know if we'll get a copyright strike for that, but yeah, uh, I, I also like Drake, uh, a good bit. Uh, he is, he is, I am the reason that he is at that four, one, uh, ADP in our mocks. I've been hammering him. I love him on anywhere around that turn. Um, I think he's a bona fide number one. Uh, he's so young. He's so good. It was a good rookie season. I know it statistically, it may have been a bummer for you, but the, uh, you know, a lot of the thresholds and a lot of those numbers that you like to see to kind of put the stamp on that. were all kind of there. Like you said, you pointed a bunch of them out. Um, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, like I said, we, we saw the talent now comes the production. It just was a bad offense overall. I'm surprised. Like I said, at the beginning that they had seven wins. Yeah. It's, it's okay to, you know, to, to start a little bit slow with, with some of these guys. I know if you're not like the best receiver out of the gate, then you're trash in a lot of people's opinions. But I mean, this is what you're looking for. There's still some value, I think on the bone with Drake. I, I agree. I would, I would still have Olave a little higher, but I mean, Drake pretty close for me. Um, if I could trade from Olave to Drake and get a, a, a decent plus, I, I would probably do so. Um, and I think you can, uh, in most leagues, people have Olave in a completely different tier and I have them slotted pretty close and they're definitely same tier. Yeah. So they are around apart here. Olave is three, one wide receiver eight and, and Drake London is four, one wide receiver 13. So in between there, you have T Higgins, JSN and Devonta Smith. You like any of those guys over, um, Drake. I so said Devonta Smith, JSN and who T Higgins. I have I have Smith still above. I I really do like Smith quite a fair deal, but uh, I'm fine it's, with, it's splitting hairs. Yeah. I'm fine with putting Smith, London, and JSN kind of together there for me. Yeah. Um, uh, the only reason I I like the lean to to London there is there's potential that true number one kind of deal. Um, but you know I don't know how much that matters at, right in the NFL currently. Um, yeah, and offset so. by. Play calling, you know what I mean? We're, right. we're, and, we're and talking Pitts about is, team night. Right, sure, sure. Um, how about Gibbs or Drake London? Oof. Um, man. I think I lean slightly Gibbs there. Do you? Uh, man, 
I I think I do too. I, I'm coming up on Gibbs a bit. I did have him a bit lower. I do think Monty takes enough away, but I mean, we're talking dynasty. So Monty's only going to be there for a short, uh, a good time, not a long time. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, how about some of these? How about the, how about some older digs or cup or, or, uh, or Drake? Uh, I will take digs and cup above. Uh, I, I wouldn't knock anybody for, you know, being slightly ageist there and taking London, but we've just seen the other two operate at such high level for such a long time. It's hard to walk away from that uh, guaranteed production. Yeah, right now there are two spots. They're one and two below Drake. So that's four, two and four, three for Diggs and Cups. So kind of right around the same area. Damn if I shame. could, you know, I don't mind, I wouldn't mind pairing a young with an old there, you know, like getting JSN and Cup or Drake and Diggs, kind of getting best of both worlds on that kind of turn. Um, yeah. I like, I don't mind doing that pairing. So that way you're not, you're getting some old guaranteed production with, with still some youth there. How about uh, Daniel Jones? or drake take in london yeah i think so too um et who travis etn oh man i'm low on etn i'll take it low. okay how about naji london yeah same uh all right let's do one more uh how about let's go with another tight end uh we'll go hawkinson tight end premium um, what are your thoughts? Mm. I don't know if you, I don't, I don't know where you stand on a lot of these guys, so it's kind of fun. But, yeah, that, yeah, that's good. Uh, so I'm lower on Hawkinson than some, uh, so I will take one in there. Yeah, I think, I think, I think I would too. Tight end premium makes makes it interesting. Maybe if it's two point, I take Hawkinson. Yeah, um, absolutely. So, all right, anything else on the on Drake or the Falcons before we get out of here? Uh, no, I, I think, you know, just briefly touching on the win total. Uh, so Vegas has yeah. them for eight and a half wins. I have them current. I mean, they won seven games last season. I have them at nine wins when I look at it and I kind of go back and forth there. Um, but yeah, I think that eight and a half wins is kind of a good line for them just because we really don't know what Ritter's going to be. Right. Uh, but just with the talent around him, I, I would take the over confidently. Just wanted to put that out there. It feels like it could be semi safe. You know, I think I think the Panthers are going to be better than maybe projected here potentially. Um, I like the defense and the O line there, and I think Bryce can manage. I like the coaching staff. Um, I sure hope so, buddy. I don't know who's going to catch the ball with the ghost <laughs> of Adam Thielen out there. Yeah, um, but uh, I have I had the uh, I think I had MGM at eight uh, for the for Atlanta. So even better if you like the over there. Um, and then New Orleans winning the division at nine and a half. Um, so you, you like you like Atlanta? Who you like to win the division? I do have Atlanta to win the division currently. Okay. Uh, Saints right. are close. Let's check out. I, I I I rarely will side with rookie quarterbacks coming out and winning the division. Um, yeah. I mean Ritter, we probably should treat as if he is still a rookie. Uh, yeah. But I think that the team is built to really make a push this year. And honestly, after seeing what Derek Carr did last season, I think it's a very beatable division. Yeah, and and you have a you have an improved defense. They went out and and and, yeah. and signed some some decent players in defense. Your pass rush got better. I believe they got Jesse Bates from the Clay Campbell. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, they they definitely made some signings there. I love Bates slotting yeah. in there. I think that was a great grab by them. I think that was really underrated. Yeah. So uh, overall, uh, like like the Falcons moving forward a little bit. I'm not nearly as down as I think some people, and it seemed like you were uh, as well. Yeah, after uh, doing some research on this, preparing for the show, I, uh, I I love them a little bit this season. I didn't realize I was going to like them this much. Can you gamble I love in Idaho? Is gambling legal in Idaho? It is not. Mm. Yeah, I, yeah. So. I uh, got to use a VPN. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, you can catch him. That's KJ uh, at the FFB tech on the Twitter machine. Um, if you're interested in reaching out to him, chatting with him, or just give him a follow. Like he's, he's tweeting. He drinks a lot of juice boxes. Um <laughs> <laughs> appreciate you man uh be sure to like subscribe comment below all that jazz uh patreon 
five dollar holler we're doing other divisions over there we're going to start doing uh some rankings and stuff uh rough drafts early kind of longer form discussions over there with that and then uh, we've been doing live mock drafts and, and mock drafts with the ADP. So look out for those on Twitter as well as we're going to start rolling out some live redraft uh, mocks. So be sure you subscribe so you can get that notification when we go live or on Twitter's at the FF Dynasty. And you may be able to participate uh, in some of those drafts. So we appreciate you guys. Until next time. Peace. Peace.